So intermolecular forces are the reason that we have solids and liquids. Um, so that's a good thing because life as we know it would not be possible if everything was a gas. That would just, yeah, that wouldn't be so fun. So let's talk about liquids and some of the effects of intermolecular forces that we see in liquids. There's two things we're going to talk about, surface tension and viscosity. And both of these are the result of intermolecular forces. So you can actually float a paper clip on water if you do it carefully. It would be, you know, be awesome if I could think ahead and set that up on the Elmo and show you, wouldn't it? Maybe next year. But you can float a paper clip. What's a paper clip made out of? Metal. Does metal usually float in water? No. You can do this with a needle too. You can get a needle to float on water. And water bugs. Have you seen those? Those are cool. Little water skaters down by the river and they just skate on the water. How do they do that? Their feet aren't particularly like paddle-like or anything. <coughs> they look like they should just fall through the water. What's holding them up? It's surface tension. Um, you, I don't think, I can't really see it in here. What, if you do this, what you see is that the, the surface of the water appears to bend. You can kind of see it a little bit right here. The surface of the water kind of bends and almost like there was a skin on the water or a thin film of saran wrap or something and that the paper clip is actually sitting on top of that. And that's the surface tension of the water. The paper clip will not float on a liquid like gasoline because gasoline has much weaker intermolecular forces and so the paper clip will just sink right through. And if you get the paper clip to float and then you put a little bit of soap in the water, the soap will disrupt the intermolecular forces and bang, it'll sink just like that. So what's going on with these intermolecular forces? Well, here we have an interior water molecule and this is attracted to molecules all around it. Now this is a two-dimensional picture, but of course we also have you know, a third dimension in there. So these interior molecules are interacting with all of their neighbors, but the surface molecule has fewer neighbors to interact with, right? Because it has no neighbors above, because it's on top. So the surface tension arises from the fact that these surface molecules experience a net inward pull. This, the interior ones are being pulled and attracted in all directions. The ones on the surface are being attracted to their neighbors to the sides and to the ones on the inside. And so there's this net inward force and that creates um, almost like a skin. Have you ever had left a like pudding uncovered in the refrigerator? And it, it kind of forms a skin on it, right? and then you can actually like peel it off and you're like, ew, yuck. And then underneath the rest of the pudding's fine. There's, there's kind of like a, I know, my analogies are just not, the analogy thing is broken today, I think. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to Red Rover in a minute and Red Rover is tried and true and Red Rover works. Actually, maybe we could, re we could use Red Rover here. The, the surface molecules are a little bit like a Red Rover line. Now, I don't think they let kids play Red Rover at school anymore, but maybe you guys are old enough that you got to play Red Rover. Do you know how to play Red Rover? Get a bunch of kids in a line holding hands, and then you got some kids, like, across the field, and you say, Red Rover, Red Rover, send Susie right over. And Susie runs at this line of kids holding hands and tries to break through their hands, right? And now they're like, ooh, that's dangerous, right? We can't let them. They don't even let them play tag anymore. It's really sad. Really? Yes, because they're chasing and running. No wonder our children are getting fat. We don't let them do anything. Dodgeball's awesome. Yeah. I got, I got called from the school the other day because Tommy got hit in the face with a basketball. They call me at work. I'm like, okay, thanks, thanks for letting me know. He comes home, I'm like... He's like, oh, 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 that? Oh, yeah, he's just a ba basketball in the face. He didn't even get a bruise, but they call me about it. Good grief. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's crazy. Craziness. Anyway, water molecules get to play Red Rover. And so the stronger the forces represents the children holding more tightly to each other, then it's harder for things to get through. So if you've got water, which is more like uh, linebackers on the football team playing Red Rover, it's going to be hard to get through them. You can float a paperclip on top. Gasoline might be more like kindergartners. They're holding hands, but not very, very firmly, and it's really easy to get through them. So the paperclip just sinks right through. Water drops are cool. This, this is kind of a cool picture. You know what this is right here? That's a really big drop of water. They're on the space shuttle, and there's no gravity. And so the water sticks together and just kind of floats around. It's like you could have some real... I'm sure they had a lot of fun. You could throw those at people, right? Well, taking a shower, yeah, that, that becomes a challenge because the water just goes everywhere. And I don't know about that. I, I think that's the case for the wet wipes, right? You know, just a little sponge bath kind of deal. But the guy that's up in space that does all the um, YouTube videos, he projects it. Have you seen it? I haven't. No, I should go look at that. He's up there and he does all these science projects, and then he also does, like, he sings. I mean, he's done so many different things. Cool. Yeah, I'm sure you could find a lot of cool videos about stuff happening differently in outer space. But I think we all know that, that water droplets tend to be spherical, right? We say, well, that's not perfectly spherical. No, it's not, because gravity is pulling it down. But as soon as it lets off of whatever that object is, it becomes spherical as it falls. And there's a certain size that water drops will tend to form. And that's why if you ever watch any of those really old, bad science fiction mo movies, right, where they've done this really bad special effects with the miniatures, and the water, you know, you're like, man, something about this whole ocean scene here looks really wrong because the water drops are way too big, right? Because you can't tell water, okay, act like you're a miniature. The water acts like it acts regardless of what size ship you're floating in it. And so things get a little distorted. But the reason that water forms spherical drops is because of surface tension. A sphere is a shape, a geometric shape, with the smallest surface area. If you take the same volume and you make it a square, the surface area is bigger. And so water drops are spherical because they're minimizing the surface area. Viscosity is another one. Viscosity is the resistance of liquid to flow. And where we hear that word most often in everyday life is in commercials for motor oil. Right? And they talk about viscosity breakdown and how that's a bad thing. Viscosity is how thick a liquid is. Okay, so maple syrup or honey or corn syrup, it, it pours very slowly because it has high viscosity. And motor oils have different viscosities. They have different thicknesses because depending on your engine and the conditions that you're operating it on, you want it to be thicker to coat the, the parts of your engine or thinner at cold temperatures because the viscosity tends to change with the temperature. <coughs> so liquids that are more viscous um, flow more slowly than liquids that are not as viscous. And notice this word looks a lot like the word vicious, but it is not vicious. It's viscous. There's an I missing. So the viscosity is greater in substances with stronger intermolecular forces because the molecules cannot move around each other as freely, and so that hinders the flow. So water is a fairly low viscosity. It flows easily. Honey flows more slowly. 
because the molecules are stickier to each other. And so they're going to pour, but they're going to pour kind of in slow motion. So high viscosity means high intermolecular forces, strong intermolecular forces. And there's a picture of pancakes just to make you hungry. But see, water would never, water would never do that. And you get to things like um, gasoline or alcohol, and the intermolecular forces are even weaker. And so they, they flow more easily.